Connecticut, in the city of New London, a 32-foot speedboat is broken away from its mooring in bad weather and sunk close to the main shipping channel. It's submerged in just 18 feet of water, posing a danger to passing boats. The city authority needs it removed fast. Everything is wet. I was diving Saturday, Sunday, fixing the big boat in the city. Heading up the recovery is experienced Selver Captain Z of Marine Diving Service. He'll only get paid if he can get the boat to the surface and on dry land. I have to raise the boat, then we, I have to tow the boat to local marina, and then the boat will be put on the trailer and brought to the local scrapyard. Can you push us up? So until then, my contract is not fulfilled. Captain Z has two days to get the job done. Along with crewmate Andrew, he heads out to the wreckage site 300 yards from the shore. There she is. Captain Z plans to feed one sling under the bow of the boat and one under the stern, then attach two airbags to each one and raise the boat to the surface. Right now, he's just uh, looking around, trying to get, uh, gather as much information as possible. There's so many ways to do it, but there's so many ways to fail it, too. I just dove down there for the first time, meet with a wreck. And I'm swimming around. The wreck was actually inside of the trench. So my mind is like racing down there. How am I gonna do it? The problem is, there's no way to put anything down to the trench, under the boat. Finding the boat stuck in a muddy trench makes it near impossible for Captain Z to execute his plan. So I swam the boat five times around and literally scratching my head. And I'm like, how am I gonna do it? I didn't see like any way where I have the grip on the salvage where I can actually get the boat out. So she's sitting like in three feet trench. The transom of the boat is completely buried in, in the mud, so we have no access to the back of the boat. The thoughts what's going through my head, like this could be the one salvage I won't be able to do. In New London, Connecticut, all right, let's do it. Experienced selver Captain Z is struggling to recover a speedboat after it sunk in a storm. It's buried in a muddy trench. Captain Z can't get lifting straps under its hull. His plan is dead in the water. So we have a little bit of a change of plans. The decision is lift the bow. First, he needs to attach airbags to cleats on the bow and sides of the boat, which will lift it enough to slide straps underneath before adding more bags to bring the vessel up to the surface. So I'm inspecting the boat, and I just found two big cleats which were covered with the cluster of lines, and those two cleats were like this big, right next to one another. And my mind kind of brightens up, and now I see that I can get the grip on the salvage. Andrew preps three airbags with a total lift of 8,000 pounds, enough power to lift the boat's bow. But attaching them to the boat isn't straightforward. The wreck is actually inside of the big mud trench. And immediately when you touch that mud, there is a black cloud, and you see absolutely nothing. Fighting muddy waters, Captain Z gets the first bag rigged on the bow. Uh, she's all yours. All right.
Right now, Z is hooking up airlines to the three lift bags he installed. And we're gonna create a partial lift. He's got two 2,000 pound lift bags and one 4,000. He's got them to three different point of contact. As the bags inflate with air, they lift the front section of the 30,000 pound vessel out of its muddy trench. So we're at the point where we got the boat somehow ready for the next stage. We have the bow up, we got the lift bags on the bow. Now we can gain the access right to the shafts where I can put the slings to lift the back of the boat. Captain Z starts to rig both slings under the boat's hull. He's trying to run a sling under the boat where the propellers are in such a way where when the boat comes up, the sling wouldn't shift back or forward. So it has to be secured properly or else you'll lose it. Slings positioned. Get the hose is ready. Captain Z rigs two airbags on the boat's stern. And finally, the boat makes its way to the surface. The boat is floating. It's off the bottom. It's floating. However, it's not completely above the surface. The stern is so uh, like flush with the surface and the bow is about a couple inches below the surface. The wreckage is a lot heavier than Captain Z anticipated. He's used every one of his airbags and has no pump to get rid of the excess water. The problem would be had that we didn't have actually enough lift because there was so much material in the boat, like old mattresses and clothes and everything is soaking wet. And the boat is actually filled to the roof, which we didn't know with all kinds of stuff and personal belongings. Captain Z needs to head back to shore to get more airbags, which leaves him with a very difficult decision to make. So the decision was, either make a big delay and take a lot of risk. If we leave the boat at the mooring unattended, the problem what I see is if the air escapes from those bags because they do leak a little bit, then the whole boat actually can go sideways. It can flip, turn over, while the little work boat will be at the shore getting the supplies. The other way of doing it is Tow the wreck where it is, six or uh, air hoses running from the work boat into the water. It's like a big chaos of hoses. We're gonna manage those hoses in the water, not to caught on the propeller, because if they catch and they sever, then we cannot control the air in the bags. The boat will lose the balance and the game over. Both plans are high risk, which could end up sinking the vessel. Now we're like stuck. The boat is floating, not completely above, but we need more supplies. Over 5,000 miles away in New London, Connecticut. He's half full. Need more lift. Captain Z has run out of lifting power to finish his salvage. Yeah, but the bow is gonna go down. He needs to go back to shore for more airbags, but this raises a serious issue. If he leaves the boat in situ, there's a chance the bags could leak and the vessel sink. Leave the boat unattended at the mooring field, support it on the lift bags, or take a gamble and tow this whole work platform to the docks. So we decided to risk it. Captain Z decides to tow the boat to shore. It's a problem because the mass of the wreck under the water will be crazy resistance and will require 100% of commitment, concentration. I want to check one. You want to hear it about? Once we start going for it, there is no coming back. Oh. Andrew begins to tow. He's only 300 yards away from dry land, but his route to shore is a navigational minefield. Oh. 
we had to go around to the buoys, around to the moorings, because otherwise we get tangled on those moorings. So we had to go the opposite direction, against the wind, against the current. One unforeseen tug on the manifold holding all the airlines together could cut the airflow to the bags and sink the boat in minutes. So it was like playing the chess. If it's a current, if it's the wind, if it's the mooring, if it's the engine power on a boat, if it's the hoses tangled in a propeller, it was nuts. We have a big challenge not to get swept by the current and the wind into the main channel, which is only a couple hundred yards out, because in the main channels there is a ferry traffic, there is a base for the submarines. Get up, get that current. You go bow in, okay? After a tense towing operation, the crew and the wreckage make it to shore, where Captain Z begins to pump out flooded water from the vessel. Water drained, the wreck is on its way to the boatyard, where it will be demolished and scrapped. All right, so the thing is done. Yeah. The boat is in the travel lift. Now I can oh, breathe. No now we'll continue, get it to the scrapyard, and my job is done. This is another successful salvage. I'm excited about it. It's another bag of experience and great success. Salvage is done, and I'm absolutely happy. Another good one done.